As web applications have started to replace desktop applications, the web browser has started to look like a much older and more mature piece of software called an operating system. So the operating system, you know, for years there was this interface between the operating system, which is this, and the operating system is something like Windows or Mac, and that's kind of the first thing that's installed on your computer. And the operating system provides this interfaces for applications to use. So you know, one of the things that the operating system is supposed to do is isolate applications from each other. So I have a web browser running. I might have have for some reason a standalone mail client running, maybe I have my music application running or something like this. Um, God, I'm going to learn how to spell here. Uh, and, and one of the jobs of the operating system was to isolate these applications from each other. It was also supposed to provide useful services for those applications like access to files and access to the network and things like this. But here's the problem. These other applications have uh, started to go away. And what, you know, what we're really starting to see is that the browser has become almost like a second operating system on my computer because the browser now, first of all, is frequently using a lot of resources. It's like one of the only applications running and it's the busiest application because what's happening? Well, my browser, now, now again, it's kind of interesting because the browser, the operating system has different applications that run on top of it. The browser has different tabs. So inside one tab, I have my mail client. Um, inside a second tab, I've got my music going on. And then I have 62 other tabs over here with various Stack Overflow pages and programming stuff that I'm using. Um, so this is you know, kind of what the modern software stack looks like. And, and people who study how to build these sorts of systems spent all this time focused on how to improve this interface and how to improve the operating system, improve the services with providing applications and make sure that they didn't you know, crash each other and make sure that there was all, no security flaws. And now the, br the browser is sort of taken over. And so now we have this new interface here that's much more important. And the browser has all of these problems that for years were associated with the operating system itself. So one example is security issues. How do I make sure that you know, the dodgy uh, programming website that I'm going to to look up some information about how to do something with JavaScript doesn't get access to, oh no, I've got my uh, bank uh, accounts open here. And so that tab has access to all my credit card numbers and like uh, the account numbers and things like that. So how do I make sure that there is some sort of unintentional sharing? The other thing, you know, the browser now actually has to divide resources between these applications. How do I make sure that the mail client that might have a bug in it doesn't slow down everything else? So for example, I want my music playback to be very smooth, etc. Um, and so this, is, this has kind of been a fascinating evolution because we are really starting to see the browser emerge as a modern analog to the operating system. The other thing, of course, that this, that is, um, that this is changing are the, you know, the relationships and the prominence of various technology companies because there's a bunch of tech companies that spend a lot of time down here building operating system software and selling it to people. And then they also spend a bunch of time up here building these standalone applications. And I'm not gonna name any names here, but I'm sure you can guess who I'm talking about. And a lot of their business model is all bound up here in selling operating system software and selling these sorts of standalone applications. But to the degree that all, you know, to the degree that all people want to do is get your software and install a browser and then do everything in the browser, you know, why is this piece of software so expensive and this piece of software is free? So that's kind of interesting. So anyway, so this has been a really sort of exciting shift. It's an exciting time to be a computer scientist and kind of see this evolution because we're really modifying and altering the entire software stack that people worked on for decades. Um, and to some degree, the browser is the new operating system.